What's going on guys? Welcome to the first episode of my Detroit Red Wings franchise mode for NHL 20. I actually had a Twitter poll a couple months ago asking you guys who I should be for this first franchise mode and Ottawa Senators was the winner of that poll with LA, Detroit, and Edmonton but I don't know if you guys have looked at the standings recently. Detroit is in dead last with a minus 50 goal differential which is actually worse than the next two worst teams combined. Also they're my favorite team. Eisenman just came on as the GM. Obviously he's our captain. Hopefully our savior. So I'm going to do this franchise mode for the next 10 years, basically give me, acting in Iceman's place, a decade to try and turn around this team. Hopefully we can get it done here and basically bring glory back to the Detroit Red Wings. I do have some ideas though for those other teams, um, LA and the Senators in particular. Now, for this, I'm actually going to do an expansion draft, but we're going to be the Red Wings still. So someone had this idea, I thought it was really cool. I've never done an expansion draft where I wasn't the expansion team, so this should be pretty cool actually getting to choose which players we're going to protect. Obviously for this, we'll just use that Seattle team we already made. So our GM name there, guys, is Eiserman again. I'm basically acting as Eiserman here, trying to turn this thing around. So like I was saying, we're not going to be Seattle, and this should actually be pretty cool. I'm hoping they'll actually take one of our bad contracts. Detroit has a ton. As you see at the bottom there, top players, Larkin, Mantha, Bertuzzi, it's just literally our top three forward lines. Now, like I was saying, bad contracts. You got Nielsen, Ablocator, um, <laughs> Darren Helm. There's just so many bad ones. If you look at our rating too, 83 overall makes us the second worst team in the division. Only auto is worse than us. And I think we're actually, so we're tied with Colorado there for the second worst team in the league, but Colorado's rating's only so low because they have a very low rated back of goalie. Otherwise, um, they'd be pretty high rated. Same goes for Florida. I think they'd be even higher too if uh, Montembeau was in a 70. So the goalie ratings definitely skew it a bit more. Now for this owner mode to be off, all we're going to have on there is salary cap and computer trades. Also guys, I almost forgot on top of salary cap and computer trades being on, we also have to turn on contract here. That way after the expansion draft, it's actually realistic contracts. Also too for this, you can use the most realistic settings. Now I always have injuries turned off just because they are super annoying, but game style, they'll be full sim, period length, 20 minutes. Um, so I said 10 years for this franchise mode, pure trades on, superstar difficulty, graphic ownership authentic, side cap on, and then trade difficulty there will set too hard. And if you guys missed my last video, I showed off my list of created players. I'll do that right now quickly. Alex Newhook there on the Carter Avalanche. You got Alex Turcott on the LA Kings. Alex Vlasic on the Blackhawks. Bobby Brink on the Flyers. Brad Lambert there is a 2022 top prospect. I actually bumped him up to 58 overall high elite, so should be going third behind Shane Wright and Matthew Savoie. I also bumped up Savoie to a franchise. People were saying high elite wasn't good enough for him. Cole Caulfield there, Cam York. Dylan Holloway also boosted him to high top six. Dennis Sanko there, Sorokin, Norris on the Senators, Sanderson there. Uh, this year's draft prospect, Wallstedt, should be a top goalie take in 2021. Kaprizov there, Condre Miller, Luke Hughes, Matthew Boldy, uh, Rodion Amirov, another guy in this year's draft, Shane Bowers, Spencer Knight, medium elite. Trevor Zegers there actually boosted to high top six as well and made him a playmaker, opposed to a sniper. Krasov, Kolzin, and finally, Yaroslav Askarov, he's a top goalie prospect in this draft, 74 overall high elite, should be taken like top 10. As well guys, I boosted Rossi's potential to medium elite as he should be taken in the top 10 of this year's draft. As well, I made both Clark and Cylinder, who's supposed to go in the 2021 draft, 55 overall as opposed to 50 to hopefully just get the rating higher by the time they get drafted. And so this is pretty cool guys, at the start of the franchise when we actually get to set our protection list. I've never done this before in an NHL game because I'm always being the expansion team or not doing one. Now, Zetterberg and Franzen, as you can see there, they're on LTIR, so like their contracts are reduced to the minimum, but they still take up a place as they have no move clauses, so that definitely sucks. Um, Larkin will add for sure, Mantha, we're definitely going to do like these seven forwards, um, three defensemen and a goalie, Bertuzzi, Athens, CU, we can only add one more, um, Heronic, it's got to be, so that means they can take Chalowski, or no, we can have three defensemen, what am I saying? So we can add one more forward, two more defensemen. Um, Green, I mean, we could definitely trade him. I feel like maybe Green's the play for the third defenseman, just because he has value to trade. De Kaiser's got a bad contract. Like I was saying, there's so many. Philip Gillette and Nemeth, they just signed. Honestly, not great. Nielsen's is terrible. Helms is pretty bad. Allocators is terrible. Perlini, I would not want to lose, so I should put Perlini there. Actually, same for Fabry. Oh, this sucks. Um, both same age. Perlini's one overall higher. I mean, in real life, Fabry's playing a lot better than... Perlini is, so I'll probably protect Fabry over Perlini. Um, damn, there's like no way we could we could do eight skaters total, but then we lose defensemen. Erickson's in the AHL, Glenn Denny's got a bad contract, Ernie there. Alright, so I'm hoping for goalies. I'm gonna protect Eric Comrie, who by the way they just got in the trade. I'll show you guys how that looks in game. And then hopefully they'll take Jimmy Howard, or maybe even Jonathan Bernier. Hopefully they take a goalie, because if not. 
I think we're gonna be losing Brendan Perlini. Um, Larkin, Mantha, Bertuzzi, we gotta keep them all. Zetterberg and Franz would definitely wave too, which kind of sucks, because like they're on LTIR, whatever, this makes it tougher, um, which I don't mind at all. It's already very tough using this team, so. Yeah, I, I'm gonna guess they take Perlini, maybe Madison Bowie. Um, I'm curious, honestly, to see who they take here, but I like that list. And I totally forgot about this too, guys, because we're doing an expansion draft, we have to do another draft. Basically, it's like the 2019 draft 2.0. And Seattle there gets first overall. Minnesota second from 12. We're picking third. So um, it's basically going to be all created players here. So usually there's like a decent top five. And like we figured, yeah, Seattle there takes Brendan Perlini. So, I mean, we gave up Alec Regula to get him in real life. Honestly, um, not the end of the world. I was hoping they would have taken one of our bad contracts. They do have to like hit the draft floor or the salary cap floor, sorry. But unfortunately, it did not happen. I was thinking like maybe even Jimmy Howard or something. But... We'll get to the draft here. So we should just have seven picks in total. Like, again, this is basically a redo draft. Um, I'm fine just picking, honestly, pick number three. So 77 medium elite, 77 medium elite. We should be getting a very good prospect here with our third pick. Goldobin, um, Haynes, both guaranteed medium elites. I feel like we need defense more than anything. Russian here, heavy slap shot, no weaknesses. Um, I feel like him and Cider could be our future top two. So let's go with him. And 74 medium elite, so he's a bit lower rated, but still not too bad. And I just in the rest of the first round, guys, figured I'd show it to you. Honestly, not a very good draft at all, which makes sense because it's an extra draft. It'd be kind of dumb if they just boosted a bunch of these teams. So um, we actually got the third medium elite there, 74. Abs got the fourth at 70, so we made a good pick. After that, the best was like medium top six, a couple medium top four defensemen, but uh, there's even a bunch of medium top nines getting taken. Some guys that like didn't get taken this year, like Ted Bertuzzi there, gets taken by the Knights, Bastron there, uh, goalies the Senators get. So it shouldn't really be stacking any teams, so it shouldn't like affect it too much, but we'll see who's available here. I actually didn't even check gems or whatever. I just took that uh, defenseman because he was pretty solid, so hopefully there's a gem. And there's, no, there's two busts, no gem. Uh, we'll take the potential here. Low franchise, 74, picking 37. Webb, 50-50, medium elite. Now these two guys, Bullian, I hope is how you say his name, and Edmonds, both are scout recommendations. Um, we'll try, but like they're not that high ranked, honestly. I'd rather just go Webb here, I think. Or actually, no, he's Saganos. We know he's not that good. This good, this guy could be really good. Uh, low franchise. I think he's made up. And low elite. Honestly, for second round picks, not too bad. And we have another second round pick here. Pick number 24. Let's see if we make something happen here. So I guess, actually, they just take whatever the picks were um, in the actual 2018 draft because we have two seconds. So that works out pretty well for us. Um, Cedric Perry there. He's actually... Supposed to be medium bottom six. I just bumped him up to medium top nine. He's playing pretty well right now with Lafreniere. So um, hopefully we can get Lafreniere in 2020. We actually have a third second round pick here. So I'm just going to take Edmonds. Hope for the best. See what he is. Uh, medium bottom six. Not too great. Like I was saying, in the second round, that's pretty bad because there's just really no talent at all in this draft. It's it's an extra draft we're going through. Um, this guy here, I'm going to take a chance. He's got a recommendation. Low lead again. That's actually like pretty solid. Usually this draft... You're not really getting much. Fourth round pick here, I see Hargrave, another sky recommendation. The last one was good. And this one, medium bomb six. Pretty rough, but uh, for a fourth rounder, honestly, it's not terrible. These guys are literally just all extra prospects we're not even supposed to have anyways. Um, Stoffling, 50-50, medium top six isn't too bad. Medium 7th definitely. I mean, for a fifth rounder, we're not going to be too upset. So I think we should have two more picks here. Hopefully, can maybe find a diamond in the rough. Don't really, if they have a face, that means they just didn't get taken. Walker, a couple guys that could be medium elite. Might as well risk it at this point, who cares? Medium bomb six. We actually have another six round pick, so I'll take Tom's here. Please be better than medium bomb six. Medium seventh D. All right, I think we have one more pick here. Actually, we have two picks there in the seventh round. So I'm gonna take a chance on this goalie here. Ladipov, I think is how you'd say his name. Sometimes the goalies, HL starter, but he's 74 overall. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, HL starter, but he's already 74, which means he could easily be like a backup for us, get up to, you know, um, I don't even know, like a low 80, and then Fleischer there, low top 9. A couple of 7th round picks there, actually, uh, were not too bad at all. So we're not the free agency period, guys, and this we're basically just redoing last summer. Everyone was already signed, so we just skipped over the re-sign phase, and free agency here is just all the guys that didn't get signed last summer, so you got Thomas Vanek, Jason Pondville, Jane McGinn. Um, guys who are retired or taking a break from hockey, though, I don't have in this. So, Justin Williams, Chris Kunitz, Eddie Lack, guys like that. Honestly, though, Vanek played pretty well for the Red Wings, so I wouldn't mind bringing him back here. We have the cap space. 
He wants a one year deal though, so I'm gonna give him like 2.5 for one year. See what he says. Um, or sorry, he wants two. I'm just gonna offer him one. Jason Palmville as well. I'll offer one year there, 1.9. Uh, I noticed too, it's actually a decent prospect. Peterson here, 19 years old, 55 overall, medium top nine. For free, you might as well go after that. So one year there. We'll see what he says. Whatever team he's on must have had like too many contracts. I think the same happened to us with the Comrie trade. Larson just went to free agency. Like I didn't have a chance to resign him or anything. I made sure to double check. So I'm overpaying. I think he wanted 700k. I'm offering 900k. Hopefully we can get him back. Um, I'd be kind of pissed honestly if we lost him because. Uh, aside from Comrie, he's like our best goalie prospect. And a pretty big trade just went down. Martinez and Lewis, the Montreal Canadiens, exchanged for a couple prospects there and a second round pick. And Peterson does sign with us. That's good, just a free prospect. Really hoping Larson comes back. And he does, okay, he's back home, that's good. Pondel as well, and same with Vanek. So there we go. Honestly, we got the two best free agent uh, veterans as well as the two best prospects, so. That worked out well. And after the draft of free agency, guys, I want to give you a quick look at what the team's looking like in terms of assets. As you can see, we have a little over $10 million in cap space, which is pretty good, and it's just going to get better as all those bad contracts go away. Larkin there, best trade value on the team by far. Then Zadina, Michael Dolbin, defenseman we just drafted, Sider, Mantha, Athens, CU. Uh, tons of bad contracts, like I was saying. Abelkader there, Helm, Erickson, Nielsen, Daly, Glenn Denning. Um, those five for sure, pretty much impossible to move. I mean, Erickson and Daly at least, one year left, so we'll probably just let those run out get 7 million cap space. Helm, maybe we could trade. Applicator, I doubt it. Same goes for Nielsen. Very, very tough to trade. I was actually messing around with fine trade and Glendenny here, I think we can actually trade. He's making 1.8, but at 77, I'd honestly rather just get this pick, which you can see Maple Leafs, a sixth round pick. There was actually some rumors he could get traded there when Babcock was still the coach. So um, kind of funny that it worked out. Um, also, I'll show you guys the goalie situation. I'm honestly going to try and trade Howard just because of his age, 35 years old, eighth year overall. Maybe Someone will take him at 50%, $4 million there, make it two. Pretty good, cheap backup, even low-end starter. We'll have Bernier, Picard in the NHL, and then Comrie. And I was thinking Larson as the AHL backup. Could even be this Latipov guy, but come with Larson to get some time played. Latipov's only 17, so I don't even know if you play in the AHL. I'll have to figure that out, but um, definitely have a lot of options there. And check this out, guys. I literally just signed Thomas Vanek, and Boston's now offering us a first-round pick for him and two-thirds. I wanted to bring Vanek back for Detroit, but I don't think he can say no to that, so that's awesome. And check this out, Joe Thornton just got traded to Nashville along with Tim Heed for a second round pick and Ingram, pretty big trade there for Nashville. And Montreal right now is making us a pretty good offer, Mike Green, uh, Yolen in there, decent prospect, medium top six, Wake there is low bottom six, along with a fourth round pick. Obviously Mike Green, I was gonna try and trade at the deadline. Um, Yolen in here, 1962, medium top six. Like he seems like a decent prospect, so it's a pretty good offer. The thing is, I'm hoping if Green plays well on our top pair during the season, we could probably trade him for more at the deadline, especially if teams get a bit more risky trying to make the playoffs. But Montreal makes another trade instead. First round pick for Derek Broussard. I mean, that seems pretty aggressive here over the summer. Like the Islanders signed Broussard very, very late during the off season. And Montreal just gave up a first round pick for him. Now they're offering us a third and a low top nine for Pondville and a fourth. Honestly, I'd rather keep Pondville again um, after trading away Vanek and losing Perlini the expansion draft, I think he can make our top six, at which point, if he plays well, his value will go up during the season. I think we can flip him, hopefully for more than that, at the deadline. And right now, guys, we're doing something the Red Wings should have done at the beginning of the season. That is named Dylan Larkin, the captain of the team. Also, as you can see here, Tyler Bertuzzi and Mantha are the two alternates. Literally, it's just our first line, but honestly, I think it makes sense. And so right now, guys, we're trying to trade Jimmy Howard at the Columbus Blue Jackets for a third-round pick, and this other guy is just there for the goalie spot. Obviously, Columbus could use a goalie. They got Corby Salah and Merzlikin, 80 and 75 overall, I think. Howard's an 83, so definitely an upgrade. Uh, value's on their side a bit, but I think they'll say yes. And yeah, they're doing, they're saying yes, calling up Picard, so good deal for us getting a third. And one thing I realized, guys, going through all the teams looking for trades, I totally forgot to show you what Seattle's team looks like after the draft. So as you can see there, the team stats is Rebuilder, but they're stacked at goalies. They got Leonard, Demko, Kemper, and Grice. Like, so Islanders, Varlamov, and Grice, that's tough. Same with Kemper and Ranta. I would have kept Demko over Markstrom if I'm Vancouver, just has the higher ceiling. Leonard, I'm pretty sure is higher rated than Crawford. So I don't know what Chicago was thinking here. Maybe because Crawford's signed longer term, but Leonard's not. I don't know, honestly. I'm not going to, you know, try and get the mind of an AI GM. Obviously, Kozanov there was the first overall pick, 1877. So a good player to build around. He's a grinder, though. First overall grinder is kind of interesting. Uh, Muzzin there from the Leafs. They got Eric Stahl, Buchnevitz, Abramov there. Polini, obviously, from us. So doesn't look like the team's going to be too high rate or anything, but they got some decent prospects, and obviously... Two really good goalies. Demko will be the goalie of the future for them. And they probably trade the other three and 
can you know use those picks or whatever to just build their team. And so next year, guys, I'm actually trying to trade Calvin Picard. He's basically like an extra goalie. I feel like Bernier and Connery will be our one-two in the NHL. Then Latipov will be the AHL starter with Larson backing him up, which makes sense. Larson's role minor backup, Latipov minor starter. Now Picard's on a really good contract, 150k for the next two years, but we don't really need the cap space the next couple of years, so I feel like it's fine. So I'm just gonna try and flip him here to Vancouver for a fourth rounder. Hopefully, I can turn that fourth round into something. And they'd say no. Are you kidding me? I thought that was a for sure trade. Um, I mean, I guess we'll take a fifth because, again, he's just an extra and it's kind of messing up with who gets ice time. There we go. So, for the start of the season now, guys, before I show you the lines, I wanted to show you this trade in game that Detroit made yesterday. Sorry, Jarvi for Comrie. Honestly, it's a lot more even than I thought. Sarah Jarvi, 2267, low top four. And then Comrie there, 24 years old, 80 overall, medium starter. But goalies have less uh, value. So it's actually pretty equal. The value might even be on Arizona's side with Sarah Jarvi. Trade rejected. So yeah, I thought like Comrie would have had a lot more value, but turns out pretty decent, um, fair trade in game. So right now, guys, I'm going to show you the lines. Honestly, hoping this team obviously is bad. We get Lafreniere, Byfield. Raymond or Holtz. Also too, Raymond I switched to 2A forward, Holtz I switched to a sniper as you guys requested. So NHL team here, we got Bertuzzi, Larkin, Mantha obviously on the first line, should do really well. Then after that we have Fabry, Athens, Steve, Hiroshi on the second, which isn't too bad. Helm, Philip, Hula, Palmville on the third, and Nielsen and Alcator on the fourth. Now defense, we got DeKaiser, Hironic on the top pair, Green, Chalowski on the second, Nemeth, Bowie on the bottom pair. Goalies there, Bernier starting, Comrie's backing him up. Hopefully Comrie being the backup, He'll grow more than being the AHL starter as his role is backup goalie. I'm hoping we can kind of get him started, maybe get him to like an 84 or something. Uh, special teams here, power play, kind of just what you'd expect. Second unit there is pretty rough. Um, AHL team, I honestly thought it was going to be stacked. As it turns out, it's not quite as good as I thought because Rasmussen and Valino both should be in the AHL. That's where they are in real life. Actually get sent down to junior. So we would have had them as our top two centers. And unfortunately, they're not there. So we actually have Zetterberg playing third line center. Wings over Saul, we got Pumple, Zadine on the first line. Second line there, we got Kuffner with Peterson and Ernie. Peterson's a 56, but he's got decent potential, plus three there too. So hopefully they play well. Such a call there with Zetterberg, Terry. Um, the fourth line honestly isn't too bad either with Smith. Defense here is actually really stacked. You got Daly Sider, plus three. Biega, Erickson, Goldobin, and Mikkelrath. So hoping for big things from that decor. Uh, Goaltending, like I was saying, that Latipov guy we drafted is our starter. Larson there backing him up. They're playing their roles, so that should hopefully help them grow. I noticed too, our AHL goalie coach actually has an A minus, I think, for teaching, or it might even be A plus, which is really good for whatever his goaltender rating is. So I'm hoping you know those goalies will grow if the AHL team does well. Um, also, too, I'll show you guys the team's rating here: offense, defense, and goaltending. Before we start the sim, I was looking for some trades for like our bad contracts, but just couldn't find any that was worth doing. So, 85 offense, 84 defense, and 80 goaltending. Obviously, I don't think we're making the playoffs or anything, and we don't really plan to. We're definitely full rebuild mode right now, so let's see what happens. And we just got a trade off for you guys from the Edmonton Oilers. A fourth round pick for a fifth in 2021 in Biega, so we're getting a round earlier pick, which is also a year earlier, and Biega is just like an extra defenseman for us in the AHL, so I'll definitely say yes. I noticed that Joe Hicketts was scratched, so he'll probably come in. So just him to Christmas, guys, and right now everything's going to plan. Currently the last in the Atlantic Division with 27 points, record there 13, 20, and 1, so... I'll uh, we'll keep sending up to the deadline. I have all of our bad contracts on the block, like I think Advocator, Nielsen, and Helm. Unfortunately, no offers yet, but maybe we'll get one. And a pretty big trade just went down, guys, between the Winnipeg Jets and the Chicago Blackhawks. Winnipeg getting Eric Gustafson. Obviously, we know they need defense, so uh, pretty nice trade for them. We're actually a couple weeks away now from the deadline. Another offer there for Chris Terry, who's in our AHL, but if we trade away him, I think we honestly have a defenseman starting for at forward in AHL, so I'm just going to leave him. Plus, I want the AHL team to do good. I don't know why so many teams want him, so... Uh, we're a little under 500. We're actually doing a bit better than I was hoping we would be doing because obviously I want the best odds here up first overall. And right now we're, I think, third last in the Atlantic. We just won again, so I don't get it. Like, we've actually done really well here the last couple months. Paggio and Callahan to Ottawa for Parsons and a third in Calgary. Wow, that's a pretty interesting trade, to be honest. So, yeah, we are doing better than the Sabres and the Senators. Vatnin and a fourth to New Jersey, or sorry, to Boston from New Jersey for Zaboral and Halak. So Halak would actually be the starting goaltender in New Jersey, plus Zaboral, pretty good defensive prospect. That's a big trade there. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we can maybe trade some guys away here at the deadline, but everyone I'd want to trade away is kind of going to be hard to trade away. And a huge trade here, Minnesota trades Spurgeon to Colorado with a fourth round pick for Shane Bowers and a second. He's locked up too, I think $7 million for like the next seven years. So pretty big contract there. And yeah, we're 60 points, one behind Sabres, four ahead of Ottawa, 28, 31, and four. 
we just been playing too good, honestly, January, February. We have to <laughs> start losing some more because I want Lafreniere. So Larkin there over a point per game right now, 67 and 63. Love seeing that. So let's go see if we make a trade here because the team's playing too well. And right now, we guys, to make a big trade to Carolina, offering them Mike Green for Jake Bean. Mike Green's got one year left here. So um, obviously, we'd rather try and trade him than just let him go to free agency. 82 overall, Jake Bean, 21.75 million top four. Would be a great defenseman to add with Cider. Also, the guy we took third overall. Pretty even value. Might have to add like a third rounder. We'll see what Carolina says. Trade rejected. I feel like we're close. So they want green. Beans on the block. Like I said, we'll try adding a third round pick. We'll do the Sharks first because ours is going to be higher. And there we go. Honestly, I think it's a huge trade for us. Next year, you guys trying to trade Ponville to Dallas Stars for a third rounder and Hansel. Hansel, I'm just trying to do a favor, honestly. Take him back for the salary. Plus, we're so low. One year left. Uh, we'll see what they say. Trades accepted. There we go. Basically, free third round pick. So that's it for us. The trade deadline, guys. I'm gonna give you an updated look at the lines. I was trying really hard to trade away Helm, Abdulkader, and Nielsen, but I felt like I wasn't willing to give up a first or second round pick, and I think we would have to make that trade happen. Like I added a third rounder to Helm a couple times. Team still said no. I feel like first or second, maybe they would have said yes, but it didn't seem worth it because we're gonna still have a ton of cap space even with those guys on the team. Um, AHL here, I'll give you a look at the lines. So Ernie Zetterberg Zadina is the first line, getting plus five, which is awesome. Hopefully just helps Zadina score even more, grow even more in the AHL. We definitely want to get him going. Uh, it's definitely kind of like our main concern. Same goes with Sider, who's actually gone up, I think, two overall already. So um, AHL team, you're always looking for the growth. NHL team, trade away Mike Green, trade away Pominville. I feel like, you know, at this point, Hopefully we don't you know finish too high give ourselves better odds for the lottery and check out this huge trade guys Vancouver trades Tan of a third round pick and Levo to Toronto for Bracco Timoshov and two-thirds There was always a bunch of discussion about Tan going to Toronto now He does as well Levo returns there. So that's pretty cool And we just finished the season guys with a record of 35 43 and 4 so not very good Which obviously was sort of the plan here for the first year uh, Larkin though awesome year 86 points 82 games We did finish last in Atlantic there three behind the Senators quickly. I'm curious how the AHL team did Last in the division as well. I thought with that decor, we would have done a little bit better, but 65 points, pretty rough. Zadina, 63 points, though, is honestly pretty solid. Um, so we'll take a look and see how everybody did. Not going to have playoffs for either team, but that's all right. As long as the AHL guys get some growth, that's the main thing. Mantha at 71, 35 goals, right on. Bertuzzi, 63, so huge year for him. Athens, CU, 57, that's a really big year. St. Fabry putting up 54, now an 80. Um, looks like the first line didn't grow at all, but Fabry is up too. Philip are pretty solid. Heronic, 38 as a D-man. Not too bad. Hiroshi there pitching in. So, obviously, the rest of these guys. A lot of them, I'm not looking to bring back next year. Goaltending, so Bernier, 0.894, 3.41. Not too great. But Comrie, positive record, a 15 and 11, 0.902, and a 2.93. So, I don't know what it is. It seems like the backup goalie always does better. Why? I have no idea. So, leading the entire league in scoring. Dry Saddle, 105. Kane, 101. Ovechkin there, 56 goals. You got Sagan, Kessel, Kessel and Keller each 95. Marchand, McDavid, Pashnak. I feel like it's got to be Ovi. And yeah, Ovi there with 56 goals. So pretty nuts. Uh, next, we'll check the entire league standings. Hopefully, we are in last. Tampa there, 114 is going to be pretty high. That way, of course, we uh, have the best odds to win it all. So looking through, New Jersey actually made the playoffs. Um, St. Louis is the 18th seed, squeaks in. Minnesota, oh my God, San Jose. The West was just that much worse than the East. San Jose, 21st in the league, 85 points, and they make the playoffs. Alrighty, and then, wow, we finished, actually, there's 32 teams now. Seattle, so the expansion team did finish last, as they usually do, 67 points there. Then Edmonton, 72, Colorado and Detroit were tied there, 74. So, that's kind of nuts. I can't believe how bad uh, Colorado, Edmonton, and Seattle all did. And the large results are in, guys. Seattle there picking first overall. So they get Lafreniere, even though in real life they're not going to exist yet in this draft. LA gets second overall, so they'll probably get Byfield. We're picking third, which means we'll probably take Raymond, I think. He's a little bit higher between him and Holtz. Obviously, too, we have Boston's first round pick we traded for, which means I'm wondering if we could get back in the draft and get that Russian goalie, because really our goaltending right now isn't looking too good. As you can see there on, on screen, Vegas was actually the Stanley Cup winner, so pretty big year for the expansion teams. Vegas wins the Cup, Seattle gets first overall pick. We'll take a look at the awards here. So Vegas Cup, Tampa Bay Presence Trophy, and Vegas beat Boston actually, so our first rounder is gonna be late. Uh, Dreisel there at Ross, Kane though gets the heart, Hedman James Norris, Sagan Lady Bing, uh, Hughes with the Calder, Flurry Con Smythe, Vashlevsky with the Vesna, also won the William Jennings, those are pretty much go hand in hand. Clefbaum, Bill Masterton, Winkler there, Chicago's head coach, Jack Adams, Kopitar Selke, Kane, Ted Lindsay, 
and then Obi there with Maurice Richard. So, unfortunately, no awards for us. We kind of figured that. Calder Cup, Colorado Eagles. We finished last in the division, so not going to get any team awards. Individual awards, Dennis Sanko, most points. Patan, MVP. Dennis Sanko, most goals. Norris, outstanding rookie. Myers there, best defenseman. Frank Kuz, best goalie. So, I've also gotten a different back of goalie. He also got the MVP of the playoffs. Uh, Charche there. Uh, de dedication to sportsmanship, Siegenthaler, community involvement, and then Frank, who's there, also the lowest goals against. Interesting year for sure. I also want to take a quick look at the playoff tree. So Vegas swept the Sharks. So that's a good rivalry there and beat them in four. Then they beat the Blues in six, the Fenny Cup champions. Blackhawks actually make it all the way to the conference final, beat them in five. Bruins in six, and the Bruins went through the Hurricanes, Devils in seven, and then Panthers in seven. Devils in real life, I don't think, are going to be sniffing the playoffs at all. So um, pretty cool year there, like I was saying. Third overall, probably going to be taking Lucas Raymond, but I'm going to end this episode here, guys. We'll start every single episode with the entry draft. I think we'll make it a lot better. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed episode one of the Red Wings franchise mode. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you're watching it, you made it all this way, and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that as well. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.